Welcome back to Modern Pump TV. I'm your host, Danny Matranga. Today, I want to share an exercise I really like to utilize to build some metabolic stress in the quads and glutes. It's an alternating jumping lunge. I'll show you how to do it, tell you what it is great for, tell you what it's not so great for, and make sure you have all the tools to do it properly and safely. Let's do it. So let's first talk about what this exercise is not. I'll tell you this, it is not a good plyometric training exercise in the way I'm going to teach it to you today. While jumping, uh, dynamic movements like leaping, bounding, or even alternate split jumps like I'm showing you have the opportunity to be a tremendous plyometric exercise, they're typically not the plyos you see people performing in the gym. Most people, when they think of the term plyo, they think of a high repetition, usually lower body based exercise uh, with the goal of building fatigue. Not a plyometric exercise, which is obviously a strength and conditioning term, utilized to, to uh, communicate an exercise's ability to build force off of the ground, explosiveness, and power. Plyometric training is not necessarily high repetition, and it is usually never done to fatigue. It's all about explosiveness, generating force through the ground, and the stretch shortening cycle. Whereas what I'm about to show you now is how to utilize the alternate split jump to build some metabolic stress and fatigue the quads and glutes. So knowing that, understand we're gonna be doing a higher repetition. We're gonna be training to a fatigue point. We're not necessarily focused on maximum explosiveness. We're doing a traditional gym, I hate to use the term plyo, not really a plyometric training tool. So that's how you def kind of delineate or draw the line in the sand between what plyometric training really is and what a traditional plyo, or in this case, fatigue-based metabolic exercise is. So why is the split stance great? One, it incorporates unilateral movement, right? So the legs are in different stances or different positions, so we have to stabilize. You perform a lunge, jump off of the ground, switch positions in the air, land in the alternative position, and repeat. So you're going to get some glute, obviously, because it's a lunge and a lot of quad, and you'll do it high enough to build up some metabolic stress. And it can be a good little finisher, calorie burner, things like that. But you see people doing it all the time, so now hopefully you know why it's good, and I'll show you the technique right now. All right, so for this exercise, we're going to set up in a traditional split squat stance or traditional lunge stance. What I want you guys to focus on is having some balance between the heel of the lead leg and the ball of the posterior or back leg. Now, one thing you cannot do when you do this exercise is drop the patella, right, that bone on the top of the knee right here or the kneecap. You cannot drop that down into the floor. A lot of people lunge and they're recurrently dropping the patella down onto the floor. That might be fine in some instances, but when you're landing from an airborne position, that's not the time to make contact with the patella. You could run into some injuries. Beyond that, you're basically gonna set up like a lunge and everything's gonna be the same. So from here, you're gonna load up, set the arms back so you can use some form of counter swing. And we're switching in midair, landing in a lunge position. You'll notice I don't break it up and land in the middle, and I don't land and then lunge. I literally switch and I land in that lunge position. You see that arm swing and that rhythm that I get going? That's very important. It's an integral piece of the movement. So as you're learning it, slow things down a little bit and get everything in sync. But once you've gotten it, you should be pretty good. And despite looking really difficult, it's quite easy to stabilize when performing this movement. All right, so to wrap everything up, you've got how you perform the exercise for metabolic stress versus a plyometric tool. If you wanted to take the same exercise for a plyometric, you just jump a heck of a lot higher, you do probably a lot less reps, and your main focus would be on force production. Now, when you use it as a finisher or metabolic stressor or some type of conditioning tool, you jump a little bit more quickly, less powerfully, with less of an emphasis on maximal displacement or leaving the ground, and you focus on reps. So how we would incorporate this for that adaptation would be at the end of the workout, as part of a Metcon, Finisher, EMOM, any of the myriad of things you could go about applying some intensity or conditioning. Um, do it for time or repetitions, 
be a little bit on the higher end if you're doing reps, perhaps 10 to 20. Uh, if you're going to be doing it for a working period or time, perhaps 30 seconds to start, it's quite difficult. You will really feel it build up some metabolic stress in the quads, perhaps the glutes. And for a lot of people, that's exactly what they're looking for. So again, like I said, if you're doing it for plyometric, fast, powerful, explosive. If you're doing it for a plyo conditioning or some type of metabolic stressor, a little bit more, uh, less of a focus on leaving the ground and more of a focus on getting the repetitions in in a shortened period of time. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to comment below, tell us what you liked about it, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. Have an awesome day.